Okay, so welcome to another Feature Friday, and today I am really happy to be joined by uh, Ken Lamoro. Ken, why don't you go and introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. Yeah, my name is Ken Lamoro. I'm the Director of Technical Product Management for the VCPP Group in the Cloud Services Business Unit of VMware. So happy cool. to be here with you. Thanks a lot. And uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Guy Bartram. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Cloud Direct Suite Products. And today we're going to be discussing what I think is a really, really cool feature of Cloud Director. Um, it is the, the multi-site feature, and we're going to dive into what multi-site is all about, uh, the value and when you would use it, and walk through some of the configuration of it so we can actually have a look at it. Um, so Ken, can you just give us a, a brief overview to start with of what is multi-site as far as a VCD is concerned? Sure. The multi-site feature was um, provided to help service providers that have many different VMware Cloud Director site installations. Mm -hmm. So uh, if a provider is running in a single VCD site and hosting tenants there, um, multi-site feature doesn't really apply to them. But as soon as they start like having a second site for disaster recovery, or if they're doing regional expansion and open another site, in another region to host tenants in that location, then multi-site becomes interesting because rather than having two entirely separate portals with two different organizations and organization VDCs that, that they're using, they can give their tenants through multi-site a single pane of glass view of both VCD instances. So your tenants benefit from having single pane of glass. Um, I'm guessing they're not having to kind of log in again <laughs> to get into that second instance. Um, and they also get then the same operating model in kind of a hybrid operating model, no matter where the cloud resource is. Yes. Yeah, yes. and depending on how the service provider wants to set it up, it really means that uh, the tenants that are accessing the provider's cloud director, uh, cloud director portal mm -hmm. um, can do so from any site that happens to be closer to them. Um, and the provider can kind of determine how they want that to happen. Excellent. And we'll go through some of that configuration in a minute or some of the options around that. Yes. Okay. Um, what type of, uh, so we can cover, um, you know, cloud director on-prem in a, a service provider's data center. Um, and like I said, perhaps a, a second location, but even now, you know, cloud director expanding itself as it is into other geographies and with um, VMware Cloud and AWS, there's, you know, um, associations that could be done to any type of VMware Cloud Director instance. So what are the kind of key considerations? How should a service provider start um, looking at uh, multi-site associations? Well, so, so long as they have administrative access, uh, system administrative access to both VCD sites, uh, there's just some basic uh, requirements, such mm -hmm. as both sites need to be able to resolve the DNS names of each other. They need to have network access to each other. Um, and they should, each instance, VCD instance, should be a different instance ID. Right. And that way um, there won't be any conflicts between like MAC addresses and things. So there's just a few requirements in getting it set up. Uh, but once those are met, then you can perform the association process. And what version of VCD um, does this work with? So I don't know the exact version spread, but it uh, the API started in version nine. And uh, so that actually offers a pretty wide spread of compatibility between VCD sites because uh, this is using actually a little bit older API. It's not the new cloud API. And uh, so that API hasn't changed. So, okay. so long as, as they're in the same uh, API version for multi-site, then they'd be able to link. Okay, great. All right. Well, Ken, do you want to step us through some of the uh, points that you pre-prepared on this, this topic? Sure. Yeah, I can share a little presentation I had here and just go through a few things. Okay. So we'll just talk about the um, kind of the, the, the multiple steps that are involved here, but um, I'll start by covering some concepts about multi-site first, and then we'll get into the two different steps that are involved. First is the site associations between the two uh, VCD sites and then 
the what really gives that tenant feature is the org associations. So you can map the organizations and the two different sites together, and that gives that tenant that single pane of glass view. Okay. So when we're talking about uh, these concepts here, uh, site is in this what we're talking about here is a single VMware Cloud Director deployment that's um, one unit of a multi-site topology. And then the organization is that tenant's presence in a particular site. Mm -hmm. And then as you're creating associations, then you'll have members, which can be site members or org members of an association. And so the association is that collection of those members that yep. brings it together. Okay, that makes sense. So in looking at the topology of how uh, Cloud Director sites are built, uh, what we're talking about initially in doing a multi-site is the cloud provider data center level, each VCD instance site. But then as you go into the constructs there, right in the, in the center, we see those tenant organizations. So that's the next grouping then of association that we have to make is between those uh, tenant organizations in each site. And where this is, is helpful for providers is rather than giving their customers two different URLs and saying, oh, if you're going to log into your U.S., org, then you need to use site a.cloud.com. But if you're going to log into your EMEA uh, organization, you've got to use site b.cloud.com. Mm. Uh, that's not a great experience for tenants. <laughs> yeah. So doing multi-site allows you to bring this together. So doing the site association itself, uh, right now this is an API process. Uh, that a provider would perform. So let's say, for example, in this case, uh, provider has had site A operational, and now they've brought up site B, and they want to leverage multi-site. So to do this at first, they're going to do the site association. And for that, the provider needs to have system admin access to both uh, locations and um, make sure that those sites can communicate over the network and have different IDs, and then they'll be able to join these. This is a one-off task, right? You're not going to be... Yeah, it's a one-time task uh, to make sure that the two sites know about each other. Yeah. And one of the, the benefits of this is, um, and we'll talk about in, in a minute how the organization can be associated. And for the organization association, you only have to be a tenant admin to do that. So the service provider can do it on behalf of their tenants or the tenant themselves can do it as a, an org admin. Okay. Where that gets a little bit interesting is say I'm an org admin at two different providers. I've, I'm leveraging one provider in one region and a different provider in another region. I might think, oh, I'm an org admin. I can just go link my two orgs and I can see both provider org instances. No, if they don't, if the sites don't know about each other, that's not going to work. Yeah. It's going to simply say, that's an unknown site. I can't link to that. So this would be a nice kind of uplifted service offering for a provider who has customers in multiple geos. And these could be, you know, like, um, for example, London and Manchester, you know, two different sites. Mm -hmm. It could be a different country. It could be the same country. Um, and then for a customer who maybe has presence in both or in, you know, in either um, either, ter either city, then to be able to access one URL and have access to all of the resources. Right. Yeah. yeah, it really simplifies it and helps, helps them to get, get a more comprehensive view of their estate within the provider. Sure, yeah. So the process for doing this then, uh, again, it's API calls, but it's, it's gonna be uh, two different sets of API calls. So after getting an auth token um, and using the, um, the older Cloud Director API, which you can go look at the um, Cloud Director API guide to find the details on this. Um, but you'll use the site association API. And after you authenticate to site A, you can run a command to say, get the local site association data, and that returns an XML package. And within that package is all the information that's needed to know about site A. And so in this case, what we're doing is we're pulling the XML from site A. So you can see the request in point number one and the response from that Cloud Director site in point number two is that XML package. 
And then we switch to site B. And what we're gonna do is actually push site A's XML package to site B. So uh, we'll, we'll get that associations link in point number three. And then um, we're going to push that XML package to it. And now site B will know about site A and have all the secure uh, certificate information, everything it needs to know to authenticate to site A. But at this point, it's a one-way association. Site B knows about site A, but site A won't talk back to site B all right. uh, if it tries to communicate. So at this point, if you were to check the status of the association, you'd get an asymmetric response. It's one way. Yeah, okay. How do you um, deal with certificate updates and stuff like that? Does the association need to be redone, or is there a way of? No, it will it will keep uh, it will keep this connection alive. This is just the initial linking, and then it will keep the the um, the uh, authentication up to date going okay. forward. Okay. It's just an initial linking process. And what is it really kind of learning about there? Is that you said that it gets a response to the XML telling it about site A when you when you do the request for the uh, site association API? Is it getting just kind of you know URLs and credentials? Yep. It's not getting like provide a VDC. Nope. No, yeah. no, everything else it will look up as needed through it through an inventory API. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then we turn this around. And now we're gonna do the same thing in reverse. We're gonna now get site B's XML package and we're gonna publish it over to site A. So now site A knows, hey, site B exists and I know how to talk to it. So now I can respond to those requests from site B and I can initiate my own requests to site B. This so after this process is done, now we're in an active state. Yeah, this is definitely uh, something that you gotta um, follow the instructions for. <laughs> Because <laughs> if you get one of them wrong or miss one, you're going to be really scratching your head and <laughs> wondering what's gone wrong. Yeah, well, if, if you don't complete this process, then the next thing that we're going to show, that will actually fail. Uh, yeah. So you'll know right away if you haven't completed uh, pairing all of the sites. And the interesting thing about this is you can do many sites together. So you can do a mesh configuration. If you have many different Cloud Director sites, they can all be connected to each other through this association process. It's not limited to just two sites talking to each other. Tell me, if I'm using um, Cloud Director Availability and I'm doing replication between cloud to cloud, it's kind of implicit then I have a, an association between them so the tenant can access you know, the, the, the failover site, right? You wouldn't have to. I mean, you could have two separate portals and they could go look at their DR site through a different portal, you know, and have that sort of separated experience. But yes, for DR, it makes sense to, to bring this together. If, you've, mm. if you're using uh, Cloud Director availability to provide uh, DR between two different Cloud Director site locations that you have, then it would make sense to associate those so that then a tenant can see their primary uh, yeah. organization resources and their DR organization resources. Yeah, okay. And the mesh, the mesh kind of process here is basically you're going to do A to B, B to A. Uh, you, are you going to do A to C? C and B to, to C. B to C, and yeah, okay, right. Yep. <laughs> so everything to everything. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right, so once that's done, now you have the freedom to because all the sites know and trust each other and communicate to each other, you can now start configuring how organizations will benefit from multi-site associations. So now we're gonna get into the actual tenant organization level and we're going to basically inform one Cloud Director site about how an organization in its site relates to an organization in an associated Cloud Director site. And so it basically will bring those together and allow when a tenant authenticates to a site, the inventory of organizations will have been collected from the other sites that it knows about, and it will present those to the tenant when they log in. So to be clear, this is not doing any stretching or, or sharing of the resources. It is literally gonna show you the resources from yes. inventory API 
and putting those into a nice centralized UI for you. Yes. Yeah. All right. So this process looks very similar, uh, and you can do it through API calls. That's what this is uh, is demonstrating here. The same, uh, very similar API call process can be done, uh, but with um, VCD 10 onwards, it's available in the uh, tenant UI as well. So we'll, we'll jump into that here in a second, and we'll actually go through this association process. It's very simple, um, but we'll show you how it works and then the outcome afterwards. Uh, but again, now we're doing this sort of one-way association. So you'll first get the XML package for organization one in site A, and then you'll push that information to site B and attach it to organization one in site B. Mm -hmm. So that now tells site B that uh, this org one on site A is, is a counterpart of org one in my site but we've only done it one way, so we're asymmetric again. Yeah, I was gonna say you have to do it both ways, yeah. yeah. The interesting thing here though, is if you stopped at this point, it's actually usable. Mm. The, the interesting thing is it's, it's, it may be either a desired state or an unexpected state. Um, <laughs> so let's say for example, site B is your production site and site A is your DR site. If you stopped at this point where site B knows about site A's org, if a tenant logs in to site B's URL, they will see their org one production and their org one DR. But if they log in only the, to the DR site, so let's say site B has gone down, they can log into site A, they'll see their DR site in site A. But if site B is still up and running, they won't see their production org, because site A doesn't know about that association yet. Yeah. So you basically have a view of, of two resource groups in site B, but only one resource group in site A. And tell me this, so you could do this on a org level and then use, say for example, you had a DR admin, um, you know, if that role existed in your organization, you could then grant them access to that org and see the, the DR org in site A, but not see the production site in site yep. B, and, and so on. But you couldn't yeah. do that in an org. If the same um, org one on site A, org one on site B, the access, once you've created the association for those orgs, is to everyone who has access to that org, right? Yes. Yeah, OK. Now, where this can also be an interesting way to set things up is say, for example, the provider only wants all of their tenants to come in through their main cloud director site. Even though they have additional cloud director sites, they can you know, basically not publish those URLs and have everyone come in through the main site. And they would see the resources from all the other sites and be able to switch to them, but their main portal entry point would be the central uh, primary site that has all the associations made. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. But if they want a real true uh, association mesh, they can then do the second process. So if we take site B's XML data from the organization and push it to site A's organization, now we've got an active association that's both goes both directions. Yeah. And just like in the site association example, uh, we can do that mesh configuration as well with orgs at multiple VCD sites all being linked together. So this is uh, something a tenant admin can do. He'll just be presented with um, the site associations that are available and the orgs he has in those sites will then have to be you know, through the XML mm. um, imported and configured. Okay. Yep. Right. Yeah, and the, the tenant admin can do this through the APIs uh, just, just as the provider does for the site level or as I mentioned, they can do it through the UI. Yeah. So let's go look at that. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so what I've got here is uh, an org VDC for Alpha East. 
And this is all my organization sees at this point, is I've got one uh, org VDC that I can see. If I switch to a different URL, I can see this, this other organization alpha. Right. What I'd really like to do is see them together. So I can multi-site these together. And I'm going to do this. You'll not notice I'm logged in. Uh, I'm actually in as the provider admin, but you can do this as the tenant admin as well because I'm using the, uh, the tenant portal URL. And in this case, you're actually in CDS. You're in Cloud Direct Service. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Yep. It's the same, same code base as VCD, obviously. Yes. So in the uh, administration tab, you can come down here to multi-site. And uh, it, we mentioned it's a kind of a two-step process. So the first thing we have to do is get the XML data. So I'll get that. And I've already downloaded some other ones. So this is uh, association data three. Mm -hmm. And what I can do then is come back to my first one, go to administration, multi-site. And I'm going to create an association and go upload that one. So these have been previously site associated, and you're now creating a org association, right? Yep. And you can see here, this is the actual XML package that you would have uh, done through the API call. It's just making it easier through a, a UI. Got it. So what it'll do is it'll verify it. Um, and what it's doing is making sure it knows about this other site. And yep, now it's successful. And you can see we're asymmetric. Yeah. So we've got the association, but it's kind of a one-way thing. <laughs> so now so, you need to export your configuration from this one. All right, let's see. And we should. Maybe it's going to take it a second here. So we should see both. Oh, I see in your data center view. Okay. Oh, it's down below. I'm yeah. not wide enough. <laughs> so there. So now, now we've got both of them in this one view. But if I go to the other one, we still just have the one sure. because we're asymmetric. Yeah. So now I go back to my site here. And we'll export this one. So that's XML4. And we'll grab that. And then it'll say asymmetric at first, yeah. um, but that'll update once it communicates back and forth, this will change to active. <clears throat> that one's already gone active. So now I've got both work VDCs listed there. And if I come back here, I have both listed here. Excellent. Now, what this also does is it does enable it uh, to be easier to switch back and forth as well. I don't have to come all the way back up to the data center view. Uh, so what I can do is click into this and uh, look at the resources here. And oops, compute, maybe that was, oh, it was in this view, in applications. So if I, if I look at the applications here, if I want to look at, say, the virtual machines, I've gotten this location, I can switch between the organization. So I'm in alpha. And just through this little menu, I can switch over to Alpha East. And it'll take you right over there, authenticates you, and now you're in. So in Alpha East, I don't have any VMs built yet, um, but I can see that I've switched organizations. Mm, that's handy. So you were mentioning earlier about uh, kind of a seamless authentication. Yes, that's, that's built into this. So I can just log into one site and then use this organization switching feature uh, to go back and forth. Or I can come up to the data center view to do that. That's awesome. Okay. So I think you just mentioned the, the other thing I wanted to cover, which is logging in, right? So what are you now got access to, um, 
sites with multiple associations on them for your orgs. How, what are the options for a service provider to provide access to the tenant to that multi-site capability? Because you know, I think they could access one, uh, one VCD instance and then obviously see the rest. Um, is there some sort of load sharing or balancing that can be done for access between them? Yes. So just looking at it at a high level, if you have a mesh configuration between multiple sites, you can create a, a high level or top level URL that you're gonna use to direct tenants in. As I mentioned earlier, you know, a, a provider could, if they wanted to uh, just use say site B as their main site URL, they could do that. Uh, they could even do single one-way associations. So uh, site A and site C orgs show up in site B, um, but probably it's better for them to, because the, the sites are most likely in different regions uh, mm. or at least far enough apart to where somebody might prefer to, to access uh, their entire estate through a closer portal, <clears throat> you can use some, uh, a couple different technologies to enable a single portal URL, which gives a simple experience for your tenants. Okay. So what we'll do is look at um, how that would that process would basically, uh, where step two is at, where it's deciding which of site A, B, or C URLs to send you to, uh, mm -hmm. you can use a couple different methods to deliver that to your tenant. Okay. So one example would be like using a, a web server redirect. So you could have your portal.cloud um, going to a web server, and then that web server has a redirect that sends it to site A, B, or C. Uh, maybe it's doing kind of a load sharing sort of thing based on number of connections and uh, it would send send them to the to the right one. That way if you don't have one site that's getting too heavily used by tenants, it can distribute that load across all of them. Yeah, yeah. So that's one simple way to do it. Uh, you can also do it through uh, DNS load balancing. So you can have that portal.cloud uh, DNS name actually return multiple uh, DNS responses and it'll be just kind of a round robin as to which tenant connects to which site URL based on the DNS response. Okay. So that's also a fairly simple setup where mm -hmm. uh, they look up the DNS entry, they get a response back that is the three different sites and the client just picks one that they're gonna connect to. I guess in that, in that respect, if you're running in cloud direct service like this one is, you could use some of the AWS global load balancing services to, mm -hmm. to access this as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's brilliant. Is there any other kind of final thoughts about the multi-site associations you want to discuss? Just the fact that it's a really powerful tool um, and there's a lot more to it. You can, you can get into a lot of different areas with it. Um, we do have uh, a nice architecture document that's available for providers. It's, uh, it's a couple years old, uh, but Steve Docker made it and it's part of the vCloud architecture toolkit. <clears throat> so a provider can go there and look at the architecting multi-site VMware Cloud Director uh, technical paper. It'll take them through all these steps, uh, mm -hmm. show them how to do those API calls. And it even shows, it's a little bit older tenant UI view, but it's still very applicable uh, in the days of 10.1 and 10.2. Uh, so <clears throat> it gives them a lot of information about <clears throat> this process and some design decisions that they can make. Brilliant, brilliant. Rosen Ken, thank you so much. It's been really good to have you on. I look forward to uh, more Beach Fridays with you. Um, so thank you very much for stepping us through the multi-site uh, setup for Cloud Director. Really appreciate it. You're welcome, Guy. Okay, cheers.